The 100 meter sprint is probably the most simple sport event out there. You run from the start to the finish line as fast as possible. And whoever crosses the finish line first wins the race. But why is something so simple, so fascinating? So fascinating, in fact, that it's the most popular and prestige event at both the Olympic and Paralympic Games. My name is Felix, and I'm a professional athlete. Let me take you on my journey. Imagine you're standing with me in Tokyo in the Olympic Stadium. It's August the 30th in 2021. 8.43 in the evening and 29 degrees with almost no wind. The spotlights are shining on you and cameras are everywhere because the whole world wants to see the highlight of the Paralympic Games, the 100 meter final. After years of hard work, sacrifices, ups and downs, you've finally qualified for the final you've always dreamed of. And now you're about 10 seconds away from winning or losing. Stay calm, stay focused. It's on you to execute the race you visualized so many times before. All the work is done. You can make your dream come true. Now it's time to perform. After all this going through your head, you're now standing behind your starting blocks, lined up with all the other athletes. The stadium speaker says your name and a camera is moving past your face. And suddenly, you hear the starting signals. On your marks. Set. Bang! The gun goes off, and so do you. Within a blink of an eye, everything, everyone shoots out of their blocks. There's no time to think, no time for mistakes. If you fall start, you're out. If not, you only have 10 seconds to perform at the highest level possible. It's you against you, you against the time, and you against the rest of the field. Mentally and physically, focusing on yourself. After all this going through your head, imagine these scenes. Imagine what it is to be a professional athlete. I hope you were able to feel at least a friction of the fascination I feel every single time I step on the racetrack. It makes me feel alive. But I wasn't born a runner. I became one. And today I want to share with you what I've learned on that journey. So let's jump back in time. From Tokyo, where the Paralympic Games took place, to La Paz, Bolivia the place where I was born and where my parents worked in development service. And there was a bit of a surprise. And I can't tell you what the moment was like when my parents saw that their child was missing a foot. But I can tell you, in that moment, my parents chosen the name Felix, meaning the happy one. And in a moment where I couldn't make any decision, they decided for me that my life should look as normal as anyone else's life. And at the age of 10 months, I've got my first procedures. From Bolivia, we moved back to Germany. Imagine in Tokyo, a population of almost 14 million to a small village in Bavaria called Herbertsdorf. One street, seven houses, 28 people. Next to the forest and fields. At that time, when I was young, I spent every free minute outside playing with my friends. We climbed trees, we rode our bikes across the field, and we played football all day long. As my parents bought and renovated an old farmer's house there, my sister and I often had to lend a hand. And when other kids had their weekend off, we were renovating this house. We torn out ceilings and walls, and we chopped wood. And maybe here, I learned the discipline I needed as an athlete. For a long time, I didn't even realize that I had a prosthesis and that there was something different about me. Even though it was not always easy for me as a young boy growing up with only one foot. But the decisions my parents made to treat me and to raise me as everything is normal made everything so much easier. Because each of us has strengths and weaknesses. Each of us sometimes need help or need to be patient with some things but we all want to be treated as equals, 
So please remember, we are all individuals with unique personalities and preferences. Don't make assumptions on appearance. And by treating everyone with respect and sensitivity, all of us can help to make a more inclusive and welcoming environment. So let's focus on the ability of each individual and not on the disability. Let's jump a few years into my story. What if I told you that a school presentation can change the whole life of a 17-year-old boy? A school presentation which I wanted to do in my favorite subject, PE, of course. At that time, I did parkour. I jumped from one wall to another. I did handstands and did front and back flips. Of course, I wanted to write about it. But my sport teacher, Mr. Kurtzus, he had different plans for me. He wanted me to write about the Paralympics, which I was anything but enthusiastic about, as I had no idea what the term disabled sport meant, as I never felt disabled. However, he convinced me. I watched a few videos on YouTube, and I was amazed on how fast these athletes could run with no legs, but instead their running blades, which are prosthetic legs specially designed and developed for running and sprinting. It just looked so effortless, just like they were flying above the track. From that moment, I was hooked. A few weeks later, I contacted Bayer Leverkusen, one of the Paralympic centers of Paralympic sport in Germany. I hitchhiked to Leverkusen, which is about 500 kilometers away from my home village. Imagine, you're living in such a small village. Sport is the most amazing and fascinating thing for you as a young boy. And suddenly, you're standing in one of the biggest sporting facilities in the country. Space-wise, my village would fit in there easily twice. I was hooked. During the days in Leverkusen, I was allowed to train with the professional athletes. I had talks to the coaches and to the boarding school and to the sport management. And before I started my long journey back home, back home an idea started to grow. And now I had to think about how to tell my parents about my plan to move to Leverkusen. Long story short, three days later, I moved into a stored room of a shared apartment with just my sport bag as luggage. I often describe the situation as a jump, a jump into a big adventure. Imagine you're standing at the edge of a cliff, and there are two options. Stay exactly where you are or jump. I think in life there are situations where you have to make a decision that is so big that it scares you, and you don't know how it's going to work out. And you have to have the courage to jump without knowing where and how you're going to land. And for a moment, it's going to feel like you're in, the, in a free fall. The wind is rushing past you, and you cannot turn back. You have to embrace the moment, embrace the uncertainty. And it's about reorientation, leaving your comfort zone, and making new experiences that move you forward in life. And along the way, solutions of the problems you were worried about will appear. You have to have the courage and jump and it can be scary and uncertain, but sometimes the biggest change can lead to the most rewarding outcome. If you're willing to take the risk, jump. On my first days in Leverkusen, I was allowed to train with a professional athlete. On my first day in Leverkusen, I saw the top athletes at their final training before they headed off to London 2012 Paralympic Games. On that day, I swore to myself, Next time, I'm going to make the Paralympic team, and one day, I'm going to win a gold medal. My vision was created that day, and I set off to work, just like my parents taught me. Each of us know that preparing for the Olympic and Paralympic is a journey filled with ups and downs, highs and lows, triumph and failure. And as an athlete, you put in countless hours of hard work, sacrifices and discipline to get to that one moment on the world's biggest stage. But for me, everything started with a basic. Since for the first time in my life, I've got a running blade. A feeling that still brings a smile to my face. And I would describe it as if you have a sport car under your feet and you don't know how to drive it yet. And it's a process 
a learning process, a process in which there are moments of doubt, moments where you wonder if all the pain and struggle is worth it. And there are moments when you face setbacks that make you question whether you can even make it to the starting line. And as an athlete, you learn to embrace the setbacks. You learn that setbacks are not failure, but rather opportunities to grow and improve. And you learn that the discipline and focus which is required to succeed in sport can be translated into all other areas of life. And probably most importantly, you learn the power of perseverance. You learn that even when the road ahead of you seems impossible, the strength of your spirit and the support of those around you can carry you through. In Leverkusen, I learned to become a professional athlete. I became a world junior record holder and had several success at European and World Championships and the Paralympic Games. However, after eight years training within the same system, the same coaches and the same teammates, I felt no longer developing. I felt I couldn't reach my potential and follow my dream of, para my, of a Paralympic champion. I felt stuck, just like a lobster. You may think now, what has feeling stuck to do with a lobster? Well, let me help you understand and tell you a short story about the lobster. In this narrative, Rabbi Tversky explains that much like a lobster, we sometimes need to undergo uncomfortable and painful periods in order to reach our full potential. As the lobster grows, he becomes constrained by its shell, causing pain and discomfort. And when, the lobster, and when he wants to grow, he needs to shed off his shell and grow a new one. And this process of shedding the shell and grow a new one is painful and uncomfortable. And during that time, he's going to feel defensiveless. But it's ultimately necessary for the lobster to continue growing. In the same way, I knew deep down that if I wanted to take my performance onto the next level, I needed to make a change. Against all odds, I decided to move to London. I changed my country, I changed my coach, I changed my prosthetic setup, I changed everything and started all over again. And it was a difficult decision because it required me to leave everything behind again. Especially because I only had one year to adapt to a new culture, a new language and a new way of training. And I had to push myself harder than ever before. And I struggled. There were times when I thought, have I taken on too much with this decision? But I didn't give up. I kept my focus and kept pushing myself to be better every day. I learned from my new teammates, I listened to my coaches and worked tirelessly to improve my technique and my performance. But let's jump back to the 100 meter race in Tokyo, the one I took you with me at the beginning. You remember? The gun went off, and in the first few seconds of the race, you fully focus on your technique. You keep your body in the perfect alignment and driving forward with explosive power. And when you reach the midway point of the race, you feel the adrenaline pumping through your veins. The wind is rushing past you because you're traveling at high speed. And you feel each step propelling you forward faster and faster. And then it happens. You realize you're in the lead. You realize you're pulling ahead of your competitors. You can't let up for a moment. You can't afford any mistake. Otherwise, they will overtake. You have to stay relaxed, maintain your posture, until you finally break through the finish line and realize you've won the race. In a race like the 100 meters, everything comes together in a split seconds. There's no time to think and no time for mistakes. And such a physical event turns into a mental game. You have to trust in yourself and your abilities. In Tokyo, I did. In a moment of pure magic, I achieved my ultimate goal. And the emotions you feel in that moment are indescribable. Relief, joy, pride and gratitude. In that moment, I've accomplished something only a few people will ever experience. 
and all the hard work has been worth it. But winning a gold medal is not just about the moment of victory. It's about the countless hours of hard work, sacrifices, and discipline. A big support team, family and friends that help you are priceless. And as a Paralympic champion, I want to inspire others. I want to show that with hard work and dedication, anything is possible. I want to inspire others to pursue the dream, to never give up and always strive for greatness. And my message to you today is, take the jump. No matter what your dream is, be the project, starting a company, changing your habits, whatever. Believe in yourself and your abilities. Take the jump, shed off your shell, be bold, be resilient and work hard. And when you achieve your ultimate goal, enjoy the moment, be grateful, but also remember that, the, that it's the journey that truly defines us. Thank you.